I have known praise <laughs> for many years. And I think it's one of the things that made me realize that God really loves me a lot and I'm very special. Because, like I told him in the green room, I think I'm one of the very few pastors in this country that get free consultation from praise. Because this man is not cheap. He's doing stuff for all over the place. So I think it's, it gives him so much honor to be able to say, well, I, I, I've known him for a long, long time, you know, and I'm just on a speed dial to him. And that's beautiful. But having said that, I want to let you know that praise is an amazing prophet. Today in the church, we don't talk a lot about, we, we want everyone to be pastors, uh, right? But there are people who are not pastors, right? But there are people who are through prophets. What, what, what makes them prophets? They are visionary. The number of things that praise was doing in 15, 20 years ago, right, nobody knew they were going to be shaping and crafting things today. He saw into the future. So I can tell you, praise is a visionary prophet in family life solutions. Pioneer. <laughs> and when he started, he did, I'm sure he didn't even know it. He, something, he just had a brainwave. He just said to me, that's like 20 something years ago. He said, I want to be picking girls who are in brothels and harlots and locating them. I, I, I said to myself, this sounds crazy. This, is this boy okay? <laughs> so he will go to Tajegule, left, left his job, and he will be raising, he will be going to brothels. And I don't know what he did, but God gave him breakthrough. Now that is very visionary. And so that has morphed into what is it right now. But bottom line is, he has, he has a vision, a prophetic vision for family life solutions. Pioneering innovative approaches to, re, to, re, to redefine family dynamics. And leading his firm, Praise for Where Research LLC in Irving, Texas, is internationally recognized as a family life strategist with two decades of transformative impact across five continents. Praise's work focuses on harnessing family systems engineering to create functional and sustainable societies. At the heart of his mission are various groundbreaking initiatives, including the Family Systems Engineering Certification Program, Out of the Box Parenting, Human Engineering Programming, Strategic Junior Church Leadership Systems, and the Ready for Life Child Development Program. Praise extends his influence beyond individual consultants to governments. And he is a consultant to Lagos State government. And now he told me that they are pitching, him, pitching to him to design a roadmap for marriage counseling all across Nigeria. So when you go, so that what, what this means is that when you go to law courts, registry to get married, you know, this court registrar, this, they, they say, we, have, we do marriage, marriage counseling. They didn't have curriculum. So they spoke to praise. He has designed for them a Christ-centric curriculum. Lagos has accepted it. Now that curriculum is going to be used all over Nigeria. He's talking to them at the Ministry of Inter Interior Affairs. This is, this is influence, right? Apart from churches and faith-based organizations worldwide aiming to revolutionize family dynamics and foster holistic societal developments. As a distinguished member of the Family Life Coaching Association USA and the International Association of Marriage and Family Counselors, IAFMC, praise continues to shape the future of family life globally. Well, that is just to read what is in the Bible that they say about him. But take my word for it. This is the best opportunity you have to have interface with a man who is wise, a wise master builder, and a, a great craftsman for family life. So please rise to your feet this morning, and let's welcome Praise for Thank you, Praise. Thank you, Praise. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you for the integrity of your word. Forever, O Lord, I word is set in heaven. Holy Spirit of God, I ask that you speak to us, challenge us, encourage us. Lord, I ask that you renew our mind by your word. And Lord, I ask that you open our eyes to see what you want us to see, to feel what you want us to feel, and to rise from here to become saviors to the problem of our world. Thank you for answered prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much for coming. I want to appreciate Pastor Tokumbo and Pastor Fumi Johnson. Um, 
in my entire life and in my entire travel, never in my life has anyone successfully moved my flight until now. No one ever has ever done this success. People tell me, move your flight. I say, no, and I'm gone. But when Pastor Tokumbo calls, I mean, I was supposed to fly out of Nigeria today, and then he said, praise, I have a meeting on the 12th. And I said, Peter, I will wait. Um, and I'll tell you why he's able to do that. I don't forget people who were there for me when I started out, because very few people understood what I was trying to do or what I was sent to do. As a matter of fact, I had people shot an entire church against me. I had people do a whole lot. Pastor Kumba was one of the few people, and Pastor Fumi, they understood. When we started the meeting at Jekulé many years ago, 2003, we didn't have a musical instrument or any. So Pastor Kumba said, praise, come and take um, amplifiers and um, speakers. And that was how we were able to communicate to over 480 young people in Jekulé every Sunday evening. So I never forget. I never forget. Um, so every time Pastor Zumba will say, I say, Pastor Zumba, you paid it forward many years ago. Please, let's put our hands together for our pastor. My spirit resonates so well with everything Pitox does because I think it's, it's, it's been a strategic leader over the years. And strategic leaders are not appreciated in Nigeria. Nigerians love miracles. They don't love process. And so when you see someone who says, Let's do this thing. The result is in 10 years. We don't like it. We want the one who would say, God of instant, no, 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 no. And that's why the nation is the way it is. Right? And so I never joke with him. So when Pastor Kumbo is saying he gets free consultation, I don't understand what he's talking about. Right? Because I can't charge him for anything. I cannot. Right? So thank you very much, sir. Pastor Fumi, thank you. Pastor Fumi will put me on our podcast. I said, these people have been there for me. You don't know. Please, can we appreciate them? Thank you. Thank you very much. Pastor Steve, Otumba, thank you very much, sir. I mean, Pastor Steve was a pastor in Daystar many years ago, so, but I used to see him from afar. Anyway, singles, uh, we're going to start with you, um, and I want to believe that within the time frame we have, we will touch on a few things. I speak very fast, so they'll put up my slides so that you can follow. You will need to listen to this over and over and over again. Um, I will do a bit more strategy when it comes to the couple's thing, because if you're a couple, you will, you will do your family vision in this class today. You will do your family values. You will do the DNA creed of your family, and maybe a bit of your family legend. I'll show you a framework, and I will tell you, you have to appreciate Pastor Tokumbo. You see, when I'm doing family vision alone for people with family values, maybe with creed without the legends, it's $10,000. Yes. That's what I charge, yes. right? But you're going to get, get it for free because of Pastor Tukumba and Pastor Fumi, all right? So please take it seriously. If you don't catch up with it, go and listen to this over and over again. Okay, so singles, I'm going to be talking to you on five marital truths no one ever told you. Um, we say that every marriage is a potential nation powered by teamwork. You see, I think God's greatest idea is the family because the family is the production factory of the society. So every time... People complain sorry, about this. Can I interject, please? Yes, sir. I'm sorry, because this is important. We want to be able to, we want him to be able to take questions and be able to answer those questions. So there is something, there is a slido that has yes. been done. So that as he's speaking, whatever comes to your heart, just punch them in clearly. So can we have this? Okay, fantastic. So just do a screen grab of it or a scan the code. It will take you to an, a particular environment because it's, going to, it's a fast talk, like I said to you. It talks fast, but it talks sense. Okay, so, so don't think that you remember what they say. So quickly, just put your questions in. And I think the, there's a link also. I think that's going to be sent to everybody through the, um, through the WhatsApp or whatever it is. Oh, fantastic. So you can join. You just go to www.slido.com. And then look for hashtag the capstone 20. Right? Or you can scan this, it will take you to the environment. Sorry about that. Thank you very much. Sir. To... Okay. So I was saying that we said every time I see people complain about the leadership in Nigeria or any part of the world, I don't complain about the leadership. I want to find out the kind of family they came out from. Because foundations are conclusions in most cases. 
And that's why I think that if we don't prioritize proper parenting, we'll keep churning out dysfunctional people who will build dysfunctional marriages. And that's why if you're a single person, you need to pay attention to what I'm about to share. Now, I'll take my reading from Proverbs 24, 3 to 4. Maybe the major scripture I'm going to use for both sessions today. The Bible says any enterprise is built by wise planning. But you know we don't like to plan. So I've been in Nigeria for four weeks. I've seen real estate, you know, done, no drains, nothing. So they finished the house. They started thinking about the drainage system and all this kind of thing. In the U.S., all the infrastructures are ready without any building. Because you begin with the end in mind, isn't it? So people don't plan for anything, right? And especially for believers. Because I know we love the word supernatural. And like I was saying to a group this morning, supernatural is the extra on the natural. So if you don't master the natural, how do you even engage the super? So someone speaks in tongues and he prays for 10 hours, but he's incompetent. He will still be supernaturally incompetent. Are we together? Yeah, because I know some people have told you that if you are not shy here, when you die, God will hand over Microsoft to you. You will still be incompetent to handle it. Right. Any enterprise, including your singleness or marriage, is built by wise planning. So which means you need to plan. And you can have a foolish plan. It says he becomes strong through common sense. But you know common sense is not common. Right? Because part of common sense as a single person, right, is the fact that you have to be able to recognize the person in front of you. So when I see people get into marriage and they're saying, oh, I didn't know I married a fool. I say, but you must be a fool not to recognize a fool. Common sense. You are dating someone and then maybe your, the younger sister insulted you and his response is a slap to his younger sister. The guy is already communicating that he doesn't have the capacity to resolve issues through diplomacy. He's communicating violence. But because he was beating someone else on your behalf, you were happy. So when the beating changes on to you in marriage, don't complain. Because we overlook a whole lot of things that we shouldn't overlook. So it becomes strong through common sense. But you see the last part? Be profits wonderfully by keeping abreast of the facts. We don't like data. Because, you see, patterns are predictors of the future. If you understand data, I mean, I work with people, and I'm doing primary counseling, and I run a simple psychometry, and I can literally pick out what they've not told themselves. And I'm saying this to this person, there's so much trauma in your childhood. You're going to damage this lady in marriage. They're like, how did you know? Data. Right? Because if you don't keep abreast of the facts, you may marry an unbeliever and you think he's a believer. Where an unbeliever is someone who doesn't believe what you believe. So a whole lot of people are on equal yoke in their relationship because someone has told you, I mean, I met a lady who said, oh, you know, they said supernaturally she's going to get married. And the guy showed up. And I said, are you sure it was God sending this guy? Ah, he said supernaturally. Of course, God married the guy, started beating her. Then she said she wants out. I said, go and give the testimony again so that they can know that the blessing that you got, because it's not from God, it has added sorrow now. Right? Data is so, so important. And so one of the greatest threats to building an effective family is the death of singleness. Because when we talk about singleness, people think that singleness is a state of not being married. No. Because when singleness is not defined, people are going to assume that, oh, you know, it's because you are lonely. It's be they say all kinds of things. I you know, I see a whole lot of, everybody does a podcast in Nigeria right now. And most of the time I'm watching this podcast, I'm just laughing because... Because, you see, social media is an amplifier of your foolishness and your wisdom. Unfortunately, foolishness is what you have roaming up and down. Because we're in the era where the loud and bold is the new right. And that's why if you are right, I told Pastor Tokumo, you need to be loud and now bold. You can no longer hire all hell. Children will take whatever has been fed on the airwaves. Psalm 139, 13 to 18 is a classic psalm. On David talking about, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Because I'm seeing a lot of singles who say to me, you know what, I'm asking them, why do you want to get married? 
Oh, I want to get married because I need someone. Do you know, I saw a lady and she's a good homemaker. So you need a housekeeper, not a wife. Oh, I want to marry someone because, you know, he will bail our family out of poverty. It's a philanthropist you need, not a husband. Right? Because when you don't even know the fundamentals of who a male, female is, who a husband and wife is, who a father, mother is, you're going to model up a whole lot together. I will redefine those ones when I'm talking to the, to the married people. But I'll share a couple of fundamental truths and I'll tell you what is going wrong and what you need to know. Number one, the ultimate stage in life is singleness. I love the way Pastor Fumi puts it. See, you were born single, you're going to die single. Right? And that's why, you see, when your singleness is compromised, you will exert so much pressure and you will choke your spouse because you don't exist. That's why when I'm talking to singles, I want to know your support system. Because you can't just meet me and just now say that I'm the only one you have. Then I'm in trouble. You're going to put me in prison. Who have, when someone says to you, I don't have any friend that I've been with for 10 years, it's a red flag. It means he has no support system. Hi, ah, you say all oh, those friends, they are just wicked people. You are, they are foolish people. They are, mm -mm, something is wrong. You have trauma. Right? Because the ultimate stage in life is singleness. That's why if you are not single, if your spouse is not at home, you're going to misbehave. Because you don't exist. I see, you know, I do a therapy called the, um, the three duplex therapy. And I ran it. I was in MTN yesterday. I was running it for them. Three duplex therapy is basically, you have three duplexes. The single called you, the married life, and the parenting life. And so I take people through all the rooms in duplexes. Then at the end of the day, I ask them to go back to the one that gives them the highest satisfaction. A majority of the people I talk to, the highest satisfaction is either in being a wife, husband, or being a father, mother. The least place that they can't stand is the place called themselves. And I know, so I always say to them that if anything happens to your spouse or your children, you're going to be in trouble because you don't exist. Your authenticity is the foundation on which every other thing is built. If your identity is non-existent, then you are going to transit from a human being to a human doing or a human thing. And that's why a whole lot of us, the premium you give to yourself, you know, at the end of the day, I tell people, stand up and praise yourself for five minutes. And I give them two rules. Don't quote any verse of the scripture and don't repeat the same words twice. People can't do it beyond two minutes. So I say to them, you know why? Because you were socialized to praise God and to praise other people, every time you attempted to praise yourself, they call you arrogant and proud. And so you have not learned how to self-nurture. And so if you don't nurture yourself, everything and everyone, what they, whatever they say around you on social media against you, will get to you. And that's why I always tell people, you know, my team always asks me, praise, you hardly get angry. Even when people talk, say all kinds of things, I say, because I know me more than them. Right? And so I can't, if you call me stupid or call me useless, I'm not going to fight you. One woman was dealing with depression and she was in my therapy. And she said, my husband is calling me useless, useless, useless. And I said, so why are you upset? She said, he's insulting me. I said, okay, can you write the words useless? She wrote, use, less. I said, there are two words there, what are they? Use and less. I said, flip it. Say less use. What does less use mean? Say when someone doesn't have capacity to maximize you. I say you. Knowing yourself, are you useless? Say no. He said I'm very, he told me what she does at work. I said, could it be that your husband was announcing that he doesn't have the capacity to manage you? And you, he's announcing, but you think he's insulting. She just stood up and said, I never saw it that way. I said, so when this is calling useless, picture him as someone who is acting in a movie called the useless husband and be watching him on location and be smiling. And that was what she started doing. That was what brings, the, the guy was like, who changed you like this? He said, I want to meet that person. Right? Because you have to know yourself and prioritize. That's why it's called personal development. It's not a spouse that's coming to develop you. You need to develop yourself as a single such that you are solid and you're a valuable product to whosoever you want to get married to. Number two, the crisis in marriage is often the death of singleness. Right? Three, when singleness is not discovered and deciphered, a loneliness will be traded for loneliness. So I see a lot of people, they say, the Bible says it's not good for man to be lonely. The Bible did not say loneliness. Because you can be singing, lonely, I am so lonely, I've got nobody, I'm on my own. You are sick. <laughs> right? Aloneness, all one. Because I tell people you can't be interdependent until you are independent. So don't come into marriage as a dependent person. No, you must be able to feed yourself. You must be able to at least have a job. 
have something you are doing. Don't come because all these things ever, you know, is my man, uh, you know, he must be the only one providing. If he wasn't married to you, how would you have been eating? Because we have a lot of dependent people. Want, you are freeloading. Because let me tell you, in marriage, what the two of you, both of you bring to the table is your internally generated revenue. Nigeria is a mess today because some regions of the country will say they don't believe in beer, but they are sharing profits from VAT on beer. If you don't believe in beer, then don't share the money from beer. Let the region that believe in beer be sharing the VAT. Right? So you have some states who are, they are adding no value, but they are sharing from federation account. And it's not as if they can't generate, but because they are so used to free. You know, the thing about free is that it shuts your brain. You can't create. So if you are a human being, part of your humanity is the capacity to add value and earn for your value. Are we together? So don't sit down and just think one guy is coming to marry you and he's going to be providing for you. They say you are the provider, you are the breadwinner. You know the concept of the breadwinner started after the second industrial revolution. It's from UK. When they say let us keep the women at home, let us keep the children at home and let the men go and work. Now I'm not saying by that to say that men should be irresponsible. No, but if both of you bring something to the table, it has so much value to the family. Are we still here? Now, God's plan is for you to find you and maximize you and until you fully accept you, you define your essence by your current reality and on the prize yourself. So a whole lot of us have been so messed up by the people that raised us that you don't even think anything amounts to you at all. So when you want to introduce yourself, you apologize for who you are. People call you all kinds of things and you get angry. See, if you don't announce who you are, then people will call you anything. I was in a meeting in the U.S. and I was the only black in the room. And I thought a white guy wanted to be funny. And he made a racial slur. He said, bad black man, introduce yourself. But he shot himself on the foot. Those things don't get to me. So I stood up and I said, well, I'm a descendant of the ancestry that made the first smart city in the world. It's called Benin Kingdom, 1300 to 1700. I said, we were so good that we produced a whole lot of artifacts that some of the people stole, stole and put in the museum and they were making money out of it. My name is Praise for Owe. <laughs> The entire room went silent. During tea break, everybody came to me. What is Benin City? I said, check, Yugs, Google, Google. And they said, so they found the Benin Wall. Is it still standing? Can we come and do da 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 da? See, if you don't declare how you want to be introduced, then they will call you anything. I won't dignify you without benefit of calling me whatever you want to call me. I will announce who I am in the room. So if I said to you as a single person, introduce yourself to us, what are you going to say? I'm lonely and single. I'm a, I'm a dog. Even the way you are walking, it looks like the whole problem of the world is on your shoulder. And I say, all oh, these guys, they, they are not even looking at me. We, why would they look at you? Are you worthy of being looked at? Because, you know, many of us don't like truth. You like people, if you have body odor, people will laugh. They will not idly tell you. But you need honest friends who will tell you you have body odor. I told the brother on campus, I said, you have body odor. Is that how pray? I said, it doesn't respond to prayer. It responds to roll on. The guy who had spiritism. <laughs> Every misbehavior is either a non-discovery of self or a non-remembrance of self. And when couples haven't passed the test of singleness, they will exert too much pressure on each other and may ultimately damage each other. So I see a whole lot of people, you can't even stand for your wife to go for a meeting by herself. You want to be there all the time. What is your stress? Some can't even stand. You see, if you are dating someone, part of the question you should ask them is, what's your definition of a male and a female? Because some people are looking at the woman and all they see is someone who is subservient to them. If a guy has no respect for a woman as a equal, then don't date that person. Because they're going to make your life miserable. Right? Because you see them all the time. Even in Lagos, the conductor will just say a lady and say, I have your type at home. You don't have my type at home. You can never even undo my type. Are we together? And you see, don't be afraid to do that. Because let me tell you, and the girl child has really suffered in this part of the world. Every time the girl child is trying to stand for herself, they will say she's arrogant and proud. No, she's not arrogant and proud. Her excellence has transited your mediocrity. And she wouldn't know what that excellence for your mediocrity. Train your girl children to be confident. Or else they will settle for small, small, funny, funny people. And let me say to you singles, 
Because the problem many of you have, especially I meet single ladies who are not married, and I'm auditing them, you know what I found? They don't want to marry a man, they want to marry a tribe. Yes. Because they live in a third world region, they are shopping. You say you can live in Nigeria, a third world country, but your spirit is a first world spirit. Now, if you are shopping for a third world man, he won't have the capacity to undo you. Because he will keep thinking, all he sees is, she must cook for me. You see, men, they are list of who to marry. She must be a good cook. You see, I always tell people that. At the point of marriage, let's assume the two of you, your wife, the person you want to marry, the lady is worth a billion dollars, you are worth a billion dollars. What conversation are you going to be having? Are you going to be talking about who should cook? What are you going to be talking about? You'll be watching the chef show and hire the best chef. So it means there are some conversations we have because of poverty. <laughs> and that's not to say don't learn how to cook. Every human being should learn how to cook. My mother put me in the kitchen. And my mother kept saying to me, I don't want you to marry, I don't want to turn a woman to a cook. I want you to marry a human being you can respect. So I fixed more meals than my wife. And I, I, when I was at home, yes. But now that even I'm not at home, all the children cook. Yeah, because everybody cook. Human beings eat, human beings should cook. Because let me tell you, mothers, the girls in the future are not cooks anymore. They are now in the boardroom. So if you don't teach your boys to cook, well, maybe fast food, or they will go hungry. <laughs> Okay, so let's define singleness. Singleness is a state of discovering the very core essence of your life, which talks about your uniqueness, accepting it without apologies, including embracing your shame. Because many of us, you know, we have a terrible relationship with shame. I tell people there are no failures. It's only a feedback. My shame is part of my story. I own it. I wear it all the time. Because whatever I've overcome becomes a testimony for someone else. With the comfort you have, com you've been comforted, comfort others. Yeah. Right? So you can't rape me by my past because Jesus washed that away. Right? Because, and the reason many of us don't own up about the challenges we're having is because of the way shame was introduced to us. You had teachers who taught you something you have not mastered. And instead of admitting that they have not taught you properly, they brought you out and they sang for you, Olodo Rabata, Ojoe Jalo Moja. So you learn to hide. Singleness is accepting yourself, including embracing your shame and keeping your focus until a state of wholeness is attaining you in service to God and humanity. And that's why I always say to people, you see, I don't go for perfection. I go for progress. Because nothing is in its perfect state at any point in time. There will always be the next level. So if you, if you give in to perfection, you're going to damage yourself. As we all with unveiled face beholding the glory of the Lord, we are being changed into his very likeness from one level of glory to another. So I won't come here and say I'm perfect. No. But me, I will give in to progress. Are we together? Right. So there are three things you need to understand about why people lose themselves. Number one is wrong handling. And I'm going to beg parents, please. This firstborn syndrome is creating trouble for our young people. I don't know where we got it from that the firstborn child must be the leader, must be the richest, he must be responsible for everyone. Because we put so much pressure on them that they lose who they are and now they become responsible for their siblings. You know what that develops into? They have what we call savior syndrome. So when the girl child who is the firstborn now gets into a relationship, the guy, she sees the guy as her sibling. And she starts taking responsibilities for him because she's been conditioned to take responsibilities for people's irresponsibility. So she sends him to school, gives her car to him, gives him a loan at the end of the day, but she's also communicating. The guy begins to say, ha ha, now she be husband, now me go be wife. And so collects all the money and takes off. I see a whole lot of that. You know the interesting thing? I saw some prayer meetings in Nigeria called Destiny Recovery Prayer for Firstborn. It was all over Lagos many, many years ago. And what did I do? I went to those meetings, about four of them, the top ones, and I wanted to run a survey because I wanted to know how they arrived at the fact that firstborn children don't end up well because that was the conclusion. So we ran a survey, and the first question was, 
how many of you in this meeting learned about parenting before you raised your firstborn child? Less than 2% in the entire meeting. So I said to them, could it be that the firstborn child became the specimen in your parenting lab, and you know the specimen never survives. So use this firstborn child to learn how to parent, that when the first secondborn comes, you have now learned it, but you damaged the firstborn. So there was no demon, you were the demon. Are we still here? Right. So wrong handling. Because many of us manifest what we call pseudo-personality. When I run an assessment, I see it. You have lost touch with who you truly are. Some of you started out as introvert. You have now become extro or you, you were extroverted. You have become introverted. So now, everybody looks at you. They say you're introvert, but you're not. It was because your power was taken away from you. And you see, the problem is when you manifest pseudo-personality, the you that will show up on the marital table will be a false you. And the person is getting married to you, and the thing is marrying a proper person, but he's married a false person. Because if you find healing in the marriage, and the real you now comes out, it becomes another problem. Now, see, this wasn't what I bargained for. So, firstborn syndrome. Number two, subjective and cultural environment. How do we see boys and girls? How our gay parents will keep girls in the kitchen, and they'll say, you know, you must not get pregnant. But they allow the boys to, to let himself loose, forgetting that he can impregnate other people. I didn't get any sexuality education. It's the girl that, that gets something little. You just say, if a guy touches you, you get belly. How do we raise people? We don't even have a system of parenting. So we are wondering, because you see, parenting is like raising a terrorist, but this time around positive terrorists. You begin with the end in mind. What type of children do we want to turn out of this family? Right? And based on that, you create a program. Then you now ask yourself, who must I become to get this outcome? Because there are three pillars in strategy. The outcome you want, your internal capacity, and the operating environment. Now, a whole lot of us didn't do that, and so we messed up the children, we exerted our own trauma on them, anger was our response when things didn't go our way. So a four-year-old was beaten for spilling water, and we call it bad behavior when it's actually age-appropriate behavior for a four-year-old. And so now you are warming up to beat your children because they beat you. Some people have not over, gotten over that trauma, and then they are going to come. In fact, I've met a lot of singles who are working trauma. So you need to find healing before you show up. Number three, significant emotional experience, void of healing and closure. A lot of us have had traumas, we've been bereaved, we've had situations in your life that you did not get healing, you did not get help, but you moved on. Because they told you, you know what, ah, um, you know, all things have passed away, but you have trauma. Part of my trauma was that I didn't cry for a long time. I didn't cry. But I was going through depression I didn't know. I was still everywhere until one day I was driving and I passed out on the steering. Finally, I realized what matters. Because while I was in the hospital, invitations kept pouring in. Oh, I said, I'm dying. Oh, praise. Brother, praise. We are believing God for you. Da, 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 da. I looked around me and the only people I found was my mother, my mother-in-law, and my son. That day I realized that if you drop dead, the only set of people that will remember your next birthday is family. Are we together? Uh -huh. So I finally went to sit with my therapist, and the first question he asked, when was the last time you cried? I couldn't remember. The moment he asked that question, it was as if the tears began to flow. I wept like a baby. Because when things happen in my life, I just move on. I move on, I move on. They all say, you know what? Because the faith movement taught us to move on. But you see, it's not faith to deny your humanity. So when I see people who are bereaved as pastors, and they are showing up to come and preach, it's not a show of faith. One day of getting away to mourn, is not, even Jesus wept. Are, are we together? Yeah. So follow me. Too many people have been totally messed up by the wrong beliefs, which has deprived them of the ability to get the desired spouse and enjoy their marriage. So I'm going to share five things marital truth no one likely told you. Number one, Opposite beings don't necessarily attract only kinds bond. I'm sure you've read the book, Opposite Attract. Right? Data is now showing us, you know, and I've not, never said it to Pastor Fumi and Pastor Kumbo. They are the perfect example of kind. I always, you know, I, I used to produce tape in Fountain of Life Church. Every time I saw them, there was something unique. The way they would, you know, throw banters and play. You know, Pastor Fumi was just all, all over the place. I would look at them and I was like, wow, there's so much chemistry. There's so much sync. 
you know, you could see that they are friends and something is just right here. But you see, if you marry opposite, hmm? opposite will tell you, you talk too much, oh, you keep quiet. <laughs> opposite things attract. Opposite being will eventually repel. That's why it takes a lot more to make a marriage work if you marry the opposite. If you marry your kind, even the Bible talks about kind in Genesis 1. But you know, people have taught all kinds of things, you know, so the Bible says the man says, this is not the bone of my bone, the flesh of my flesh shall be called woman because she was taken out of me. Now, I'll show you what happens when opposite the track. So in the personality frameworks, you have four personality types, the intimidating Omar, which is the natural leader, the creative convertible, which is the reserved person, the, um, sorry, the truck. The convertible is this person who's all over the place. Sometimes they can be scattered. You know, they are very extroverted. Then you have the Ford, which is the perfectionist. In the opposite attract context, this is what happens. The Alma is project driven. He gets married to a truck who is pro, um, people driven. He has no attention span. He gets married to someone in opposite attract who has a high attention span. He's bullish. He gets an, uh, so imagine someone who is bullish gets married to someone who is warm. You can imagine the trauma the one person will be warehousing based on his anger. Because she, so one day they just said a quiet woman stabbed her husband to death. And they'll be like, is the devil? No. She warehoused too many trauma because she couldn't externalize her reality. Quick decision, slow decision. So imagine Pastor Dungba says, oh, we want to move from that um, uh, old capstone to this new capstone. He said, let me think about it. And you know, sometimes in a bit not to think about it, we say, let me pray about it. <laughs> and that prayer over analysis paralysis, month one, month two, month three. Prices are going up. Say, so so God has not given me a word. You know, we put some singles together and then um, some of them were asking themselves out. So this lady, this guy hacks this lady out and the lady did not say anything. So the guy went ahead to ask someone out and after about six months, put up wedding invitation. Then the girl came to the group and said, but this guy came to ask me out. And the guy said, I asked you out. Did you get back to me? And he said, I was still analyzing. You know, it's part of, that's the wrong teaching somewhere. There's a software playing in our brain, thinking that the guy will be waiting. Yeah. Because it's a market square. The guy just went, this one is not ready. Went to the one that is ready. <laughs> right? Blunt communicator, diplomatic communicator. So what we're trying to do most times, and this is part of what the temperament teaching has done, the damage, part of the damage he has done is, it now makes people abdicate their responsibility to someone else. Men, what pet temperament reveals are your strengths and weaknesses so that you can work on that weakness. How can you say as a human being, my temperament says I'm a scattered person, so I will marry someone who will be arranging the house. No, that's a skill every human being can learn. Are we together? You say I'm a blunt communicator. I just talk anyhow. So that, that's good news. We should accept you for talking anyhow. Because if you talk anyhow, you are going to mess up people's esteem. Yeah. I was in a meeting and a guy looked at his wife and he said, shut up. I'm telling you. Right? But I was in another meeting. It was a board meeting. And I took a position in the meeting. And if you know my wife, my wife is also very vocal. She took a contrary position to me, rolled out data. I was the chairman of the meeting. You know, and it was a bit heated. I said, no, no, this position I take. My wife said, no, 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 no. So during tea break, we said, oh, let us call it tea break. So we went on tea break, and so she brought her tea break, and we started chatting, and we were playing, playing, playing. So a pastor called me aside. He said, please, your wife was disrespectful. I said, what do you mean? He said, um, ah, that his wife cannot talk like that. I said, Oga, if you know me very well, my wife will not sit in a meeting because she's married to me. I said, she's sitting in that meeting as a professional because she's qualified. He said, because leadership is not sexually transmitted. Because people have transmitted, that's why you give mic to someone who doesn't have capacity, because he's married to you. I've seen a lot of pastors why we should not be handling the mic. So the guy looked at me and said, ah. I said, yes. I said, see, when someone disagrees with you, it means they are seeing it differently from you. I said, you need to respect their opinion. I said, my wife is not a zombie. 
So she now, you know, sir, his own wife cannot be like that. Where years later, the woman became depressed. And when I was angry, the woman said to me, said, praise, I have no friend, I'm lonely. I said, because my husband will never allow me to talk to someone else. Please, being a husband is not about holding a woman captive. You are called a bridegroom. Your role is to groom and set her free to become the best version of herself. So if you don't have that capacity, don't marry. So why do we hide on the personality type witness when every human being actually has the capacity to develop strength in all these areas? Can I tell you, you know, uh, I, 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 am, I am just spontaneous. Uh -huh. You must be measured. The Bible calls it self-control. It's a fruit of the Spirit. So because you lack self-control, now you are, you are hiding on the personality. I believe, you see, if you saw my personality many years ago, I was hyper sanguine, what you call sanguine. But right now, all my values are well developed. That's why the Spirit of God should control you and personal development should help you. Now, so see what happens. I always say that opposite attracts is, is work, kind is grace. Right? And so, you see, I want to talk. Opposite attracts say you talk too much. But if you are in kind, bring it on less gist. I want to have sex. Opposite attracts say I am not in the mood. And they, I know a woman, opposite attracts, told her husband, sex will happen three times a year. So at the beginning of the year, January, say, pick your date. True life story. True life story. That guy was almost going mad. And she would tell him, I know you can't cheat, you know you want to make heaven. I want to take this risk. Opposite address it's better we maintain status quo. Let's just be managing what we have. But you know, kind, what's the worst that can happen? Right? I want us to become more creative. Say, you want to turn me to something and someone else. I love to explore and don't mind trying out new stuff. How do we parent? Open my way is the better way. Let's figure out the best way and embrace it. Let's go party with friends. Opposite, I don't like crowd. This other person is just only where you are. So basically, what you need to do, Bible says, is create in me a pure heart and renew a right spirit within me. And what that means, newness talks about your beliefs, your thoughts, your feelings, and your actions. Because a new spirit is actually a new personality which determines your personal reality. Because once your personality changes, your personal reality will change. So some of you need to work on yourself. So don't just wait and say, you know, I, I, I don't know how to organize things, so I will marry someone who will be coming to organize things. That person will be bored after a while. Because for every time she arranges shoe, you will scatter the shoe. That takes me to number two. Number two truth no one is likely going to tell you is that patterns are predicts of a future ends background check is key. You know, even the Bible says, search me, O Lord, and know my heart. Try me and know if there are my thoughts and see if there be wicked way in me and lead me into the path of everlasting. So there was a lady who, a guy reached out to me because I said, I know a lot of good ladies who guys can marry. So the guy says, it's some pastor in um, Port Harcourt. So he reached out to me and said, I want to marry this lady. And the lady is a family professional. I mean, I run a certification program. One of the people are trained. So the lady, they started talking. And the, lady, the guy asked for a social media and a social media and she gave me. She asked for hers. So apparently, I didn't know my wife was involved. So she's my wife's mentee. Send the stuff to my wife. And my wife said, let's check him out. So they began to solve his um, digital footprint. And so they saw a place where he tweeted, I am done with women. I hate women. So she brought it up and said, you know, this thought, yeah, I know it's about five years ago, but has it changed? Then he got angry. So he reached out to me. He said, PF, this person you sent to me, is not, she's not representing you. I said, why? He said, eh, why is he digging into my past? Uh, I said, are you aware that the, I, the choice of his spouse is the most important hiring in the world? I said, in case you don't know, HR companies, you know how they hire? They will first write, they will sort of advertise 1,000 people. They will now set aptitude tests. They reduce them to like 100. They will do stage one, stage two, to the final three. Now, in the final three interview, if they still don't find what they are looking for, they won't choose the best fool. They will start the process all over again. I said, so she wants to hire the CEO of her life. Then you don't want her to do the background check. Because part of the new thing is that, you know, boy meets girl. We are both born again. You don't need to check the... the, the hey! They play. <laughs> We've got to check out. How do you relate with your parents? 
How do you talk to your siblings? How do you relate with your friends? So as a single person, you are talking to a guy, say, ah, you know, tell me about your friend. Yes, ah, say one of my friends, you know, when the guy, I gave him water, water. I went on social media and I scattered ground. Run. Run. Because if anything happens in your relationship, you, it will give you water, water. If it's giving you water, water behind the scene, it's even better. But on social media, have you not seen people who are fighting them? You see, every time I see people fight themselves on social media who are spouses, the question is, is there no same adult in their family? And that's why as a single person, don't fall in love with someone who has no accountability and get a written understatement from God, signed by God. Because you see, molesters, they isolate you to mess you up. So you say, ah, I want to marry you. Oh, my accountability, you know, Pastor Fumi is even the one you should go to. <laughs> say, ah, Pastor Fumi, all he needs to do is just, you see, if any guy is daring and he wants to marry you, and you say, Pastor Fumi, and he's confident enough to come and meet her, most likely it's authentic. Because people that have something to hide, they don't like to be accountable. So they'll be telling you, but we can handle this thing by ourselves. Are we not adults? Mm -mm. The way God has created life is for all of us at every level of existence to have someone above us. Because once you isolate yourself, you become a monster. Are we together? So HR companies says background checks have two main purposes. One, validate the information provided by the candidates through the interview process and help them safeguard employees and the company from people who may be potentially dangerous to others. That's what HR says. So how dare you want to choose a spouse and you're not checking him out? You know what our parents did? Maybe the way they did it was crude. But they would check the family. We knew the families that would not stay in the husband's house. We knew the families that were prostitutes. We knew the family. They knew all the families. Because you see, the family you emerge from, right, install certain programs in you. That if you don't uninstall those self-sabotaging patterns, you know, I love the scripture that says, do not, do not be conformed to the pattern of this world. Be transformed by renewing your mind. You know the way I read that place? Be transformed by uninstalling your self-sabotaging patterns. Because you have self self some of the self pattern was to shout. Because the way my father was calling me when I was a child, as if they wanted to call you to death. <laughs> Press you! Oh! <laughs> so I had to uninstall it. My father never cooked. My mother put me in the kitchen. So I uninstalled my father's software. Because let me tell you, you can have a parent who, they are virtuous, right, but they are also poor. Part of what you will copy is virtue and poverty. Yeah, because they are the ones in front of you. They model, they are telling my father model, there are things I don't want to be like. So you have to isolate and uninstall. Right, it's not to say that, you see, when they check out those things, it's for awareness sake and for you to get help. It doesn't mean we're not going to marry you, but at least let's be aware. Some people even have genetic diseases in their family. Medicine can now pick that ahead of time to say, hmm, these people have this and this and this and this. It's for you to know, Right? So when they tell you, check, check, what, I know a family, everybody gets married, but they get into divorce by the fourth year. Even I, year two of my marriage, I was gone, I was ready to leave the marriage. She didn't offend me, she didn't hurt me, there was just something in me that said leave. So when I was going through therapy, you know what I found out? My dad was an Anglican priest. Every two, two years they transferred him. So my life history was such that I went to four primary schools, three secondary schools, one university. Every time my father is in a location, I start a new school. I make a, made a new best friend. As I'm settling with that new best friend, they transferred him again, I have to go and start in another place. So I had a pattern of two, two years of movement. As I got into marriage, once it was two years, I was ready to move. Patterns are predictors of a future. Background check is key. So here are the core patterns to check. One, you want to check for beliefs alignment, right? Because like I said, unequal yoke with a non-believer, a non-believer is someone who doesn't believe what you believe. If your belief is that everybody makes money, I believe is that your money is my money, our money is your, your money, that's a non-believer to you. Unbeliever doesn't mean it's bad, right? If you say everybody cooks, and he says, no, you are the only one that must cook, that's a non-believer to you, right? You'll be unequally yoked. Right, so you want to check beliefs alignment, check for patterns and personality alignment, check for connections and conflict relations. 
right? Resolutions. Check for areas of pain and heal from them and check for spiritual alignment. Right? You want to pray in the name of Jesus? I want to pray in the name of Buddha. <laughs> Unequal yoke. In fact, you can both be Christians and be unequal yoke. The media, the marriage collapsed. A major marriage in Nigeria. I knew what collapsed the marriage. It was the fact that one person in the marriage, her life is driven by prophets. Every movement like this, prophet, prophet. Prophets can say, fire this person from your organization and she will fire. So I wasn't surprised. So do you want to marry someone whose life is there's one prophet, Baba somewhere, who determines everything that happens? Say you must not have sex for the next three years. Number three, when a marital governing system is what I would zero in on with the marriage people. But you see, there are things you need to do before you marry. One, you want to create your marital vision as a single person. Where there's no vision, the people perish. Where exactly are we going? What type of marriage do you want to build? Because you have your desires, he has a desire. Write it down and make it into a family vision. Right? Agree on your marital values. I will give you a practical step of how to handle that in the second session. Design the DNA creed of your family, design the legends of your nation, create and pick relevant ideas I can create. Don't worry, I'll break this down in the next session. Right, but you see, when there is no uniform picture of a desirable future, marriage will terribly suffer. That's why a lot of marriages are suffering. Because even if the two of you mean well, once there's no alignment, you will go your separate ways. So that's why it's important. You know, let Pastor Bim Bodukaya will say that courtship period is a period for interview, not a period for intercourse. Because the moment you interview, introduce intercourse, communication begins to drop. And once you taste that intercourse, that's what you'll be doing. And that takes me to number four. Number four is important. The greatest threat to your marital peace may be the culture of the nation that produced you. And once you don't create the right formation, your originating nation may sabotage you. So it's very simple. I mean, when people ask me to define marriage, I say that marriage is the coming together of a man and a woman from two different nations to build a new nation that will promote the best interests of all and whose culture will give our world rest. So can I have a male and a female, please? So let me just show you what I'm talking about. Male and female, two singles, you want to get married. Put yourself forward. I've done a session like this before. A male and a female came out. Eventually, they got married. <laughs> You're married, right? You're married? About to. Oh, okay, so you are. Are you married? Are you seeing someone? Are you a good woman? <laughs> if you're a good man, pay attention. <laughs> right. Okay. You, no, you're seeing that. <laughs> so this is it. It's from a family where... Daddy is the lion of the tribe of the home. Daddy controlled everyone with the blaring of his horn. Anybody grew from that family? Oh. I did. Right? Now, nobody knows what daddy hands. You, it's an insult to serve daddy with food and not put like six meats. This guy has a PhD in third world family. Now, Bible says he that finds a wife, finds a good thing, and obtains from the Lord. God loves him and he starts to pray to God. Give me a wife after your heart. Give me a wife after your heart. She's from a family where daddy is on a first name basis. Daddy is a friend. Everybody knows what daddy earns. Daddy plays with everybody. Right? Developed family. Civilized family. Well structured. Right? Well exposed. Now, when they come together, God is not thinking about the two of them. God is thinking about the children they are going to give birth to. God's plan is to create a new nation out of both of these people, right? And what God is trying to do, so what God expects is for this guy to activate his sanctified common sense to know that God has blessed him with a first world thinker. And what God will expect is for him to submit himself to the mentoring of this person so that he can be mentored of his third world mediocrity to the excellence of first world thinking. But you know what will happen? Because he has been told, a man is the leader. A man must lead. Right? So he's going to be dragging her down to teach her his way. And you know the person that suffers? She's not the one that suffers. The children. So the children are born to observe mediocrity. Born to observe disorderliness. Born to observe shouting, screaming, and all sorts of things. Right? And so the children start their own journey. And God's 
agenda truncated because of a guy who refused to activate and appropriate the blessing God has sent. So part of what you analyze when you come together, can you describe your family? What type of family is it? Right? How did your father relate with your mom? Can you talk about it? So she tells you, oh, in our family, everybody is free. Already you know God has blessed you with someone who had it good. Because the best form of learning is modeling. Wealth is tra transferred through families. She already knows how to do it. You don't know how to do it. There is nothing you stand to gain by still insisting, I must, I must. And you know what they say? Say, male, men have ego. That's not true. Human beings have ego. Oh, you know, hey, a man's first need is respect. No, I've never seen a man. Do you want to be loved? No, I will just respect you. I don't want, I, I won't love you. Choose one. I've never seen, I've never seen a woman who doesn't want to be respected. Respect and love are human needs. All these things that we pacify people's ego and we entrench all the things that's not helping us. Right, so what you need to do when you come together is to audit your upbringing or else your originating family will. In fact, in many marriages, the couples are not at war. It is the culture of the family they came out from that is at war. Thank you very much. Okay, so let's study this up, singles. Um, number five. Okay, so questions to ask. Questions to ask. What nation did you come out from? Describe the lifestyle of your, your nation, which is your family. What is the perception of a man and a woman in your family? So if the perception of the man is that a man is superior, a woman is uh, inferior. You know, our president went to a nation, Germany, our president, our old president, went to Germany, a nation that was led by a woman, and that was where he said that his wife belongs to a kitchen and Zaoza room. Right? Who should submit between a man and a woman in, in, in your nation? Because, you see, if you don't know the difference between a man, woman, husband, wife, so if you say, you know, the Bible says women must submit. Uh -uh. Wife, submit to your own husband. Submission is a human need, mutual submission. Submit one to another in the fear of the Lord. Yes, if your wife is a better money manager, you submit to her intelligence in that area for the good of the family. Are we together? I hope the men like me after this session. <laughs> How is money handled in your originating nation? You want to know. How is correction done? What non-nation looks like, exactly like the originating nation and what patterns should we expect? So I was doing this. And so I asked this question, what non-nation looks exactly like your originating nation? And the lady told, told me, he said, Haiti. So I said, Haiti. He said, really? I said, you always feel needy. She said, yes. Every problem Haiti has, she modeled it. Say, you know, you can't get married based on this. He said, I know. Say, okay, so what nation would you want to benchmark? She mentioned it. Said, Can we begin to work? It took us another six months extra. But she got it right. Right? And so let me say this even if your wedding date is fixed and you have a reason to push it forward, please push it forward. It's better to get it right once and say, because, oh, we have sent that invitation, they have cooked rice. The most important thing in the wedding ceremony doesn't cost money is, yes, I do. It doesn't cost money. Because if you cook all the rice and, and pastor say, will you doubt take this woman? And you say, no, I don't want. You know that's the end of the rice. <laughs> what existing nation will you buy and why, why, what would that mean to you? So let me take five and um, I'll stop. Number five, a lot of marital conclusions may not be totally correct or no longer relevant to your present reality. So Mark 7, 13, say you have made the word of God of no effect by your tradition. I see a lot of people teach marriage and they're teaching culture as scripture. Yeah. And they had embedded with Bible. And like you're going to put people in trouble. And you see that trouble everywhere. And so people just show up and then, I mean, I met a lady. She was 43. She's now married. I said, why are you not married? I said, praise, you know, all the men say, I'm not domesticated. I'm not, I said, what does that mean? I said, I don't understand it myself. I said, bring your CV. When I looked at her CV, she became a senior manager in a bank at 27. The bank sent her on a training to Harvard, Yale, Stanford. She left for oil and gas. She became ED. 
So I said, what type of men are you looking for? He said, Igbo man. I said, says who? <laughs> and pardon me, it's not because Igbo's are, she's Igbo. I said, you want to marry a tribe, not a man. I said, are you aware there are men who don't know all this demonstration you are talking about? He said, yeah. I said, well, you go for international conferences. I said, so, why don't, he said, I see them, but I, I've never, you know what was happening? Her mother told her, you must marry from our tribe. You must marry from our tribe. You see, your tribe is not the place you were born into. Your tribe are the people's thought process aligned with yours. Yeah, that's your tribe. The people who vibe like you are your tribe. Because how can you say you are my tribe and you believe in beating women? You are not my tribe. Because in my tribe, we don't beat women. So, men are logical, women are emotional. Human beings have logic and emotion. The one you have utilized the most is the one that becomes prominent. That's why men suddenly see a woman who is logical and they say you are behaving like a man. Yes, she's a man. Because the word man is the word humanity expressed in two gender, male and female. Because I don't understand it. You say, so you say women should be emotional. See, in my marriage, I'm the emotional one. I'm the one that can cry with you. My wife is looking at it and saying, no, can we check the data here? Something is not aligning from what he's saying. <laughs> I'm the one you can swindle. I'm the one that can donate money to you. My wife, is, she's budgeted everything to the T. Uh, so when my wife taught me financial intelligence, because I was taught, I came into marriage, I thought I could handle money. We were setting, resetting to zero. So my wife, we went to play a game, cash flow one one, and my wife was making better financial decisions. Say, let us give you money this year to handle. Say, eh, say we'll put you on a budget. So you know you are the president of the family. So they put me on 100,000. <laughs> 100 <tanya. coughs> I finished it in two weeks. So I came to meet her and said, um, sweetheart, please. You know, with humility. But there was something in me that I was like, she better made part of me. Let me scatter everything. Well, I humbled myself because systems is not emotional. So I said to her, I said, I finished this money. I said, what should we do? I said, I need extra. Okay. I said, I have options for you. He said, um, I have the money we're saving for annual vacation. Should we give you your part so that when it's time for vacation, you, <laughs> you need to marry a woman that is firm. So I should we give you your part so that when it's time to travel, you can stay back in Nigeria? Ah, that didn't sound good. He said, but we have a little amount for entertainment. It may not be much, but it might. He said, ah, you know, we go for a monthly movie. He said, you can watch home video here. We will go to the cinema. <laughs> it didn't sound right. I said, is there another way? Okay, he said, the other way is, you know what you normally would bring every month? If you can do it above it, we can give you a loan from the Federation account. That was too hard. But you see, I suffered that month. It was the longest month. But you see, by the next month, because I suddenly realized that what was making me lose guard and mess up were on budgeted expense. To go to the bank, see all my friends, and I'll buy them things. I was doing lao lao. I became humble the next moment. So my default became no, not yes. So at the end of that month, I had savings from my 100K. And my wife said, wonderful, you finally got the lesson. You don't need people who patronize your irresponsibility. So if you are dating someone, if you have a woman who is logical, right? She's a human being. So perish that thought that a woman must be emotional. Human beings are both emotional and logical. Two, women are homemakers. There is no woman that can make a home that a stupid man has vowed to destroy. Husband and wife are homemakers. Because we make the home together. So there are narratives we need to perish. How this narrative well, you are mopping your house because of small debt. You now say, I'm helping my wife. Your wife is not the cleaner. You are keeping your family clean. Are you with me? You babysitting. I, I, I'm, I'm helping my wife. Whose child? Any man that can't provide is worse than an infidel. That's my Bible. Go and read the Bible. It says, if anyone, if any. And he wasn't even talking about marriage. He was talking about care for widows. I know they have used this one to molest men. Because a man that can provide and lost his job, 
and suddenly he has a problem. How can he become an infidel because he can't provide since he lost his job? So the women who we quote this scripture is for widows who. And you know you are not a widow. <laughs> See the man. <laughs> the way into a man's heart is through his belly. That's the way to a gluten's heart. I know you have been told. Say the way into how can the way into your heart be through your belly? So every mama cast that cooks better meal gets into your belly. Or gets into your heart. No. Right? And the last one there, a woman that can't cook, can't keep a man. How do people teach these things? How do people teach these things? Can't cook. If, mar- if you are getting married to Bill Gates' daughter, and his father's will this entire world to her, will you say, come and cook? <laughs> these are non-essentials. You see, they are good if we know how to do them, but they don't define anything. Because, you see, don't fall for sensationalism. The Bible calls them cheap trails. It sounds nice, but it doesn't make it right. Can we talk about character? Can we talk about kindness? Can we talk about maturity? Can we talk about love? Can we talk about someone who is developed? So singles, these are the five things that no one is likely going to tell you. But the question is, what can stop you from getting married and experiencing marital bliss? The final thing I'll say to you is that there's no option, there's no point trying to find a spouse when you have not found yourself. And there's no point asking anyone out when you have not asked yourself out. So the simple question I'm going to leave with you is this. If you go on window shopping and you see you being window shopped, will you buy you? If you can't buy you, don't go and ask anyone else. Focus on you. Develop you. Because everyone wants to marry the most valuable product. So you'll be the valuable product. God bless you. I am praise for warware.com.